Hi, today with the help of a friend, I spent some time getting my ideas together for my videos for the end of the year and also for the end of the month. And those will be coming up within a few days. But I saw a video today that Steve Donahue did and he he did the video because of uh, Mara at Books Like Whoa. I'm going to list or link both of them in the description below. But the name of the video, and you saw it in the title, is How Do You Booktube? And I thought that was a great way to talk about my channel for a bit. I kind of hit a, a nice milestone because actually I was going to do a video when I hit 300. But a lot of things got in the way and that wasn't able to happen. And now that I've go, got over 350, this video going in right now, it's I'll call it a milestone video. Again, it's called How Do You Booktube? And it was just a handful of questions, but I thought that they really were very good, very well thought of, and that I actually have input that's worthwhile. Now, the first question is, what camera do you use? I'm using my iPad, and I've used it for maybe 99% of my videos. I did maybe five or six videos on my laptop, but I switched over to the iPad. My laptop was running a bit slow. Granted, I have a new laptop now, but I've gotten accustomed to something with the iPad and that's why I'm staying with it. As far as a camera itself is concerned, I do intend in, on investing in a Logitech webcam. Actually, my daughter bought me one a couple of months ago, but it was defective and I didn't exchange it. I just simply returned it. Um, whether or not I need a new camera just to do book two videos, I'm still weighing that option. The next question is, have you thought about getting a P.O. box? No, I, I, I'm i not thinking about this at all. Uh, two reasons. Number one is I'm homebound and disabled, so getting to my P.O. box would be a pain in the behind. And B, we live in a relatively small building with only a few apartments and my front door is relatively close to my bedroom. So I always pretty much know when the mailman, UPS or Amazon comes. So all my books and so forth, I have no trouble getting access to immediately. So there's no need for a PO box. The third question is why I'm doing this video. It's what is your approach to ARCs or advanced reading copies? This term, ARCs, is used very overwhelmingly in any book discussion because most booktubers, book reviewers, bloggers, and so forth probably start off with ARCs. Yes, I said most, and I said probably because life is not about absolutes. Everybody is different. Everybody's approach to things is different. So I had to kind of fix that a little bit. My personal uh, approach to ARCs is yay, and I'll tell you why. Years ago, I reviewed for a magazine called Romantic Times Book Club, and I also reviewed for, which was popular at that time, was Yahoo group channels. I had my own review site, which was Lovers of Romance. As I said, I reviewed for the magazine and maybe a half dozen other online sites. I was extremely active, but I got very ill. Actually, I've always been ill, but at that time it was overwhelmingly so. And because of that, I stopped reviewing. And what's worse is I stopped reading. So I went into a complete drought, like nothing. And then as the years went by, I went back to my old, old favorites, which were basically James Patterson, Faye Kellerman, Dean Koontz, maybe two or three other authors and I followed their series every time they came out with a new book. So I went two or three, four years without reading anything and then several years with just reading those specific authors and staying up to date with those series. But when I started participating in the coloring community, I realized that a couple of colorists were also booktubers. So when I asked someone, oh, how do you get ARCs? I want to get back into reviewing. She says, oh, well, the authors, they send the books to me, so I really can't help you. So that's okay. I just put my hat back down and I watched and I listened. 
And in another video, maybe a few weeks later, the term net gal came up. Not net galley, but net gal. Well, my ears were sharp, so I said, hmm, what's net gal? And then somebody said, net gal, it's a book review site. So I went, I read everything I could about NetGalley, I signed up, and that was at the end of March. Early April, I began getting ARCs from NetGalley, and I'm still getting them every day now. I also found out about Edelweiss, so I started getting ARCs from Edelweiss, then there was first to ease, and then my friend Fashan Quinn, oh no, before Fashan, I became whitelisted to publishers like Kensington and Bookature. All of that I did on my own. But then, over the course of time, I met other reviewers such as Fashan Quinn, who is WTFIU Reading, and she told me that she's whitelisted for a host of print publishers. So she gave me some email addresses and I started contacting them. And I'm just gonna grab these because they're right here. These are my most recent arcs, okay? That's just that stack. I could move around and grab another stack, which I'll grab. And I, I have a few more here. I have some on my bed, my nightstand, my bookshelf, my rolling cart. So thank you for Sean, because the print publishers are sending me books. So what is my approach to arcs? I want to go ahead and give you some statistics. Since I started with NetGalley, I received exactly 272 ARCs. Of these, I have reviewed 170. Remember, this is since April. I have had some DNFs, which are do not finish, and there were 10 of those. Uh, let's see. I'm not going to talk about what I read in 2018. I'm going to save that for another video. But as far as those ARCs with NetGalley, my approach to them is if I request them, I am going to read and review them. Now, how do I handle my commitment? This is how I do it. At first, I was using notebooks and journals to track things, but then they become voluminous, especially when I started doing blog tours. I could not you, uh, organize things well enough. And then I switched over to Google Calendars, but then the list just kept on growing, so I couldn't organize well with that. Well, one of my friends, and I'm gonna mention two of them now, one is Shaleen, who is a coloring book nook, she has this five subject notebook way that she organizes her things, so I put that in the back of my mind. And then my other friend, Elizabeth Knees, who is Elizabeth Spooky House of Books, uses Excel, I believe, but she uses a spreadsheet on her computer. So I married Shaleen's idea with Elizabeth's idea. I played in a one week span with five different spreadsheet programs, and I settled on Google Sheets. And as I practice with each because I'm self-taught every single thing I've done in my life I, I'm self-taught so as I as I was playing with the various spreadsheets I quickly learned how to cut and paste so as I practiced with all five of these spreadsheets I was not typing in hundreds of titles over and over and over again nope I made columns I matched up my columns I cut and paste so as time wore on I settled with Google Sheets the magic of Google Sheets in my behalf is with my disability and being in bed all of the time, I need convenience. And Google Sheets offers that convenience because I can open up my spreadsheets on my phone, my iPad, my laptop, my Kindle, and I think that's it. Any, any electronic I have, I can open up my spreadsheets. That's important to me because I have to deal with convenience. So as far as how I handled commitment is concerned I set up the spreadsheets in chronological order from the date of release not from the date that I received them because NetGalley and Edelweiss and all of that they do that but my spreadsheet is how I mean is what is the release date and using those release dates in that in, in that format and lining up each publisher, whether it's Edel, uh, each source, whether it's NetGalley, Edelweiss, First to Read, Inkslinger, whatever print publisher, everything's in chronological order. So when I create my TBRs, I try to grab as many things in the, from the oldest books from each category. Sometimes I'm good at it, and sometimes I fail. Now. Let's talk about how I failed in December. 
I created in a, an elaborate spreadsheet for the month of December. And, excuse me, not a spreadsheet, a TBR. I'm sorry, my daughter came in, so I got distracted. I created an elaborate TBR for the month of December. I put, I believe, 20 books on there. And it should have been no problem getting those 20 books read. But then my friend Fashan read this one book, says, Robin, oh my goodness, I can't put this book down. You have to read it. Well, one of the places I get books from, which is Forever Publishing, and their, their uh, Grand Central Park Publishing is also part of Forever. Her, uh, the, the editor's name is Estelle, and she sends a newsletter. And when I got this newsletter, there was one particular book. I'm like, no, I'm not interested in that book. So when I got my books from Estelle, I didn't get this one particular title. Well, as I mentioned, my friend is telling me, oh, you have got to read this book. It's really exceptional. So I wrote Estelle, and I said, I know I didn't request it, but I want it, so I'll get that book later. So when I found out I was going to get that book, I, I discovered that there was five books in the series prior to that. So I went and bought the first four, and I read the first four within a two-day period. Then... There, another author emailed me, and authors emailing me, this happens every day, several times a day now, but another author emailed me and said, oh, we would like you to review this particular book for this author, would you please do it? So, of course, I said yes. Again, I discovered, oh, no, it's part of a long series. So, not, oh, no, but, oh, wow, it's part of a long series. So, I bought and I read all of those books. And so... With that, plus with Elizabeth telling me about a couple of fillers from NetGalley, my December TBR will in almost no way reflect my December wrap-up videos. Notice I, I said videos, plural, and you'll see why later. So that's how that's a very long answer to my commitment question or my approach to ARCs. I take them very seriously. Can I just throw in one other thing about how sometimes people don't work well with ARCs? There are mood readers out there. I don't think I'm a mood reader. I'm a very uh, OCD type of person. I'm a very organized, orderly person. And once I have something in mind, I pretty much follow that pattern. So I'm not a mood reader, so therefore ARCs work for me. If you're a mood reader, ARCs may not work for you because... That TBR that you have set or that want to read list you have on Goodreads, you may look at that and have may have to play the lottery, so, so to speak. Put them in order of 1 to 100 and, and do the random code generator and pick number 16 and read that because being a moody person. Fortunately, I don't fall into that category, so I do well with my arcs. Wow, that was almost five minutes to answer one question. I apologize. The next question is, how do people get good at Instagram? I can't answer this with complete uh, confidence. Um, yes, I Instagram every day. I, I use Instagram in two ways. I've done over, say, I think my number is 925 coloring pages over the course of years. So when I started using Instagram, it was simply to upload my pictures. But then in the last few months, as I use Instagram, it's primarily to upload my book reviews and YouTube video links. I know that some people use Instagram to the degree that it's referred to as Bookstagram and they use it and it's populated quite heavily. I'm not that efficient with it. I, I'm very specific with it. So I can't give a great answer to that question. The next question is, how do you deal with hate and or negative comments? Not good, okay? I'm going to just on a teeny weeny level say that I've experienced hate to a large degree on another platform and I didn't do well with it. That's all I'm gonna say about that. On my channel, how do I deal with hate and or negative comments? Okay. I find in some videos I get zero likes, I mean zero dislikes, I always get likes, but I, I get zero dislikes and I'm really happy about that, but then in some videos I get one, two or three dislikes and I'm okay with that. And then in a couple instances I got two death threats. Yeah, so I, I didn't get upset though. And let me tell you why. I went over to the creative studio and I looked up the analytics. 
and I clicked the comments analytic and found out that I had uh, maybe 500 or so comments since I just started my channel three months ago. And in 500 comments, I got two negative comments. So from a logical point of view, those people mean nothing to me. I wouldn't know them if they were sitting right next to me right now. So they, those comments mean nothing to me. As far as the hatred that I receive, notice that's a present tense. I realized today, I just thought about this. Now I've been getting good advice, but today I realized that these people are really just not that important to me. I have goals in my life. I have a family. I have my likes, I, the things that I enjoy doing. So negative comments and people, I don't care anymore. The next question is editing software recommendations. I have to give props to a couple of uh, creative videos on YouTube that have helped me. I learned to play with several editing software packages on my iPad. And this, by the way, goes back to answering about the camera and why I don't use my laptop anymore. I found a soft, uh, a video editing package called an uh, app called LumaFusion. And compared to all of the other free, paid, or moderately priced, high price, low price packages out there, I felt that LumaFusion with a flat rate of $20 would meet all my needs and not only did it meet my needs but it surpassed my needs and i know there's even more i can do with it than i am so that's going to be my first recommendation as far as thumbnails that's something else i learned on some of the creator videos is that in order to drive traffic to your channel you need to have eye-catching thumbnails now one of my friends referred me i can't think of the name of the app but she referred me to a couple of apps and there's three or four apps under the same family name, I mean, under the name, same name, just different versions of the app. And that was a little bit voluminous me. I, I couldn't handle that. And then somebody recommended PixArt, and I found out that I can create really nice uh, thumbnails with that. I've also been recommended Snapseed, but I haven't even downloaded Snapseed yet. Um, I may check that out, but... I'm really happy with PixArt. It meets my needs and I'm not looking for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of uh, visitors to my site. So I think that uh, PixArt does the job. So my recommendations are going to be LumaFusion and PixArt for the iPad. You have iPhone, Android, laptop, digital camera. I can't, I can't uh, weigh in to rec recommending any apps for that. I apologize. Now, the next two things that I'm going to talk about aren't questions. They were thrown at the end by Mara. And actually, the first one is more of a statement, and that is, do you have a helpful tip or any new advice to offer? So if there's anything you like to offer advice or a tip for my channel, please go right ahead. And the second one is very much related to that, which is, are there any questions about me or my channel that you would like to add? I slightly modified that particular question to fit me a little bit better because I am a new YouTuber, so if there's anything that you feel that I can add to my channel or upcoming videos, feel free to offer me the advice and I'll gladly take them into consideration. So anything that you have to say or offer, just do so in the comments below. All right, thank you.